This conference will now be recorded. Okay, so welcome all of you to the class. So in today's class, I'll be discussing this intrahepatic cholestasis of pregnancy, the new guideline that has come. Apart from this, uh, uh, some part uh, towards the end, I'll be covering uh, fatty liver of pregnancy and hepatitis. Uh, these two topics are uh, important for part two people because questions are come. Okay, so in between, there would be questions also. And if you guys find anything that is not clear, you can stop me. So I'll be asking, answering your questions. Okay. Now, what is important to know is the numbers. The numbers are important. And uh, like uh, in UK, incidence is like 0.7% of ICP. But it is more in Indian, Asian or Pakistani origin. Okay. It is 1.2 to up to 1.5%. This percent, uh, percentage in second line uh, is important uh, because it comes in exam as a question, okay? Now, incidence of itching uh, in pregnancy is 25%, okay? Now, uh, ICP, it has got multifactorial condition. And uh, how? what is the characteristic features of it? There would be pruritus, but there is no skin condition. Apart from this, there would be uh, increase in uh, bile acid concentrations. Okay, usually it it occurs in the third trimester because that time you know the uh, like uh, gravid uterus becomes bigger and compresses on the liver. So this could be the one of the reason. So but it can be occur early also, and this pruritus and bile acid for to be labeled this as a diagnosis of ICP. Previously, we used to say obstetric cholestasis, but uh, now they have changed the, you know, terminology as intrahepatic cholestasis of pregnancy. So this is ICP. So the diagnosis will be confirmed when, after birth, when the resolution of the pruritus, um, and also the bile acid concentration is there. Okay. Somebody, okay. Now, uh, like there are uh, classification. <laughs> This classification is important because it's recently been asked in part three viva station, important for part two always. So now they have put it into three categories. So uh, if the bile acid is uh, itching plus bile acid less than 19 micromole, then it is gestational pruritus. Okay, so this is the definition now. And if it is uh, itching and bile acid in between 19 to 39, it is mild ICP. If it is in between 40 to 99, along with the each, then it is moderate ICP and severe ICP being when it is eaching plus bile acid peak more than 100 micromole per liter. Okay, so this part, this you, uh, uh, both part two and part three people has to remember because it is commonly occurring in the stations asked in viva. And part two, it is important. Apart from this, this has been a new change from the previous guideline. The, the, uh, so I'll try to focus on the areas where the changes are there because question will come from that part of guideline. And what is the normal upper limit of violence in concentration in pregnancy is 18 micromole per liter. Okay, so this is the normal limit. Now, <laughs> diagnosis. So diagnosis, like a patient will have itching but skin, when you examine, the skin will be normal. There will be no lesions. Bile acids will be more than 19. Okay. And it is confirmed, as I already said, after birth. If the diagnosis is suspected, then complete uh, like uh, structured history and examination to be done. Why? Because it can't be only obstetric cholestasis. The patient may present with other signs and symptoms, uh, other uh, causes for itching. There could be liver dysfunction uh, from any other cause or there could be itch from any other condition. So it is important that we have to, you know, uh, think widely instead of just having a tunnel vision and thinking about obstetric cholestasis. So uh, like uh, liver, uh, once uh, like, um, um, so a liver function test and bile acid to be repeated if the itch is persisting. And like uh, in during pregnancy, if they given a question, like in part two people, it is important to know 
that if they say that patient of ICP diagnosed at 32 weeks, but by 34 weeks or 36 weeks, patient becomes normal, then it can't be ICP. That means there has been some alternative diagnosis because ICP cannot get corrected unless the, um, the delivery is there. Okay, if the such kind, if they give you, you any question where violence is getting normal during pregnancy, so it is not ICP, diagnosis is wrong. Okay, now for the diagnosis, what they say, like if the, uh, if from the clinical history examination, and it is clear that is ICP. So for every patient, additional imaging or in a, uh, additional tests are not required. So it is individualized approach, okay? It is in individualized approach. But if the patient has got uh, an, a, atypical clinical symptoms or a, associated comorbidity in that situation, consider or early onset of ICP. Atypical presentation, comorbidities, early presentation, uh, early onset of ICP, that means uh, you have to do uh, other testing also. Otherwise, it is not required. Postnatal resolution that occurs when the tests are done at four weeks time, that means that uh, it is ICP only. So once the baby, once the delivery is there, then only diagnosis of ICP will be confirmed. Okay, now this question, this will be important for the part two and part three, both people. If it is severe, very early or atypical presentation, then in in the uh, in that condition a referral to be done to a hepatologist okay rest all can be condition like uh, you are treating it yourself as an obstetrician but if it is severe very early or atypical presentation then referral to a hepatologist would be there required so this is important for the part two people now postnatal resolution it, so this is again a change from the previous guideline in previous guideline, they were doing tests. Uh, they wanted to, like they were saying that for a 10 week, 10 days postnatal, they used to do a left click test, what we read in previous guideline. But this is the change in the new guideline. In new guideline, postnatal testing is done four weeks after childbirth. Okay, so this is a new change. And this is specifically was asked in exam, part three exam. And if the viva, if the role question comes in part two, they will ask this. Okay, so what will happen? Patient symptom will will uh, of itching would resolve, and liver function test, including bile uh, acid, they will come back to normal. So you have to remember that now that you have to do the test at four weeks postnatal, then uh, it is confirmed to be the diagnosis of ICP. Okay, now what? how it affect the mother okay what could be the maternal problems so what happens itching itching is there that we already know uh, it may, usually it is more at night so it will affect sleep apart from this if the patient has an icp there are very high chance of de developing preeclampsia and gestational diabetes so like uh, um, because of that they should have an, a blood pressure and urine, urine monitoring for preeclampsia and testing for gestational diabetes according to the national guidelines okay this is also a new update from the uh, previous guideline so now uh, they are saying that icp uh, if the woman having icp there are high chance of developing a coma this conditions pt and gtm okay now what can be the fetal risk so most common fetal risk what, like, uh, uh, what is there is the preterm birth okay either it will be spontaneous like uh, or it will be iatrogenic because the bile acids are rising so we want to terminate the pregnancy so uh, these are the fetal risk up another it could be what it could be meconium stained liquor during labor and childbirth and like uh, um, if the baby babies are born early or if the meconium is there we already know they would like to receive more nicu admission or neonatal care and stillbirth okay so it is important to know what are maternal risk and what are the fetal risk that is associated with icp so these are the fetal risk that you should know i'm repeating it again it is preterm it is meconium stained liquor it is most of the baby liable to require advanced neonatal care and the stillbirth okay so these are the fetal risk now fetal uh, stillbirth this is important to know 
Now they have graded us uh, according to the stillbirth and according to the bile acids, they have, uh, you know, uh, defined differently how the, de de uh, when the patient should deliver. Now what they say, if it is mild, mild is, uh, if the if the bile acids are, if, if it is mild icp and no risk factor then st risk of stillbirth is same as the background risk so there is no uh, there is no increase but if it is moderate bile acids and no risk factor then stillbirth is same uh, until 38 to 39 weeks so that means if the pregnancy continues more than 39 weeks then there would be stillbirth therefore you will uh, will uh, will be seeing in upcoming uh, you know slides that uh, in the 40 to 49 if the uh, severe uh, like sorry if the moderate icp is there they would want patient to get delivered by this time now you got the reason why we want to deliver moderate icp by this time because after that risk of stillbirth will increase okay if 100 uh, if it is more than 100 then risk of stillbirth is higher than background risk okay apart from this uh, if uh, like if the comorbidities such, such as gdm preeclampsia twin pregnancy like these are associated factor then uh, they, they will another increase uh, the possibility of stillbirth so uh, like uh, it is individualized approach to be done at the time of uh, birth because in this guideline they have given like uh, for, uh, they have given uh, according to the level of uh, like uh, bile acid they have given the weeks when the patient should deliver so uh, for mo mo moderate as a, it is 30 to 39 and for 100 it is 35 you will see in the upcoming slides but if these patients are associated with any kind of comorbidity then we all know that comorbidities are increasing so that will increase chance of stillbirth so that may change our decision maybe we'll take individualized approach maybe we'll deliver this baby more early okay so now one thing okay so cause of stillbirth in icp so uh, you can answer this bile acids are high increased liver in james hypoxia bile acid may cause acute uh, fetal um, anoxia event possibly due to fetal arrhythmia or acute placental vessel spasm so uh, answer anyone can answer what could be the cause of stillbirth in icp i'm d yes very good it was clear only because it was so much explained possible answer so it has to be there but this is the answer and this is again written in the new guideline that bile acid usually cause acute uh, anoxic uh, anox event in the fetus why because there could be fetal arrhythmia or um, acute placental vessel spasm okay so this is the reason behind stillbirth because this also gives us an idea uh, because in later part of the guideline they what they say whatever the medication we offer whatever the monitoring we do we are unable to you know pick whether the baby uh, when the fetus is not uh, 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 coping well or when when whenever the fetal distress is there we, the, now this is the reason we can't pick because it is acute event sudden <laughs> placental spasm so whatever the doppler we do so whatever the treatment we do we can't prevent this because of that they're so much worried uh, in uh, obstetric cholestasis about the uh, stillbirth okay so this is the reason good explanation given in this guideline so this yeah i already told this so uh, like uh, and stillbirth associate uh, is more associated with peak bile acid level it is not associated that with uh, trans aminase level okay so stillbirth has a direct correlation with the bile acid now reason we i have already explained okay now uh, so these were the maternal and fetal risk that is associated with obstetric cholestasis now coming to the like uh, um, how the patient would be cared if the patient has been diagnosed with icp so we already know the woman would be in high risk case so there should be multidisciplinary care and the patient to be booked in the consultant consultant led unit now uh, for the if the icp diagnosis is done then they would consider repeating liver function test and bile acid 
after one week and why we are re repeating that because we need to determine uh, determine the frequency on the individual basis because how frequently mild moderate or severe people will be um, liver function test will be done in this condition so we have to determine the frequency so because of that liver function test and bile acid has to be repeated one week later okay before any care plan is made so this is also new in this this guideline okay so once we diagnosed after that we are repeating the test for one week more okay now how the maternal monitoring is done so this is if the patient mild icp patient patient has mild icp so weekly testing is done till uh, 38 weeks okay that will help in deciding the time of birth if it is moderate icp weekly testing till uh, 35 weeks and uh, gestation and uh, uh, why they are doing weekly because the moment it crosses 100 then you know repeating bile acid will make no difference so uh, severe icp with bile acid 100 routine testing of bile acid if it is if it is already crossed more than 100 and if you are repeating it then uh, uh, it is not going to make uh, any help in decision so routinely not offered so routinely not offered so to decide on the frequency of the testing they are uh, like doing this test after one week if the diagnosis is confirmed that also so this way the moni maternal monitoring is done and this part is also again different in this guideline from the previous one in previous guidelines all this uh, like um, division and the different uh, test uh, how frequency of the test it was not given okay now uh, this is the maternal monitoring now fetal monitoring fetal monitoring that i already told you this that you either we do scan or usg or ctg we are unable to pre prevent or predict stillbirth the reason because it is an acute anoxic event we already know that so what we say we have to tell the patient that if they have got any problem and loss of fetal movement or decreased fetal movement they have come to their maternity hospital or maternity um, clinic for immediate assessment okay so this part is important to know now uh, clinic uh, uh, so how the clinic uh, treatment what what should be the treatment or now the patient is coming so you what treatment can be done so usually uh, like treatment would be for symptomatic whatever the problem mother is facing like each is there or um, like um, any pro whatever the problem patient is facing so treatment can be given to that but that treatment to improve maternal symptoms are usually of limited benefit okay so what type of treatment can be given these are antihistaminic tablets chlorpheniramine at night usually uh, like uh, though the effectiveness is uncertain but chlorpheniramine at night can be given okay usually uh, it is given 10 milligrams you know three times i think so it is important to know and uh, in the uh, in the very small column of a guideline they wrote apart from chlorpheniramine so chlorpheniramine will be sort of a choice of treatment now other antihistaminics can also given that is loratidine and citrazine but uh, because they uh, the sedative effects uh, side effects are not there okay so this is one treatment that can be given to patient second what we give urodeoxycholic acid or uroso this will this can be given the uh, uh, like um, uh, not for reducing like if we give uroso then it will not reduce any adverse perinatal outcome okay so like it will not affect whatever the chances of fetal complications are there what the guideline says if the bile is more than 40 or more if the patient wants to take urodeoxycholic acid so they in a view the gestation can be prolonged but they won't be able they won't be able to prevent stillbirth so the uh, meaning is clear that a uh, uroso we can give for the patient just in a view that uh, you know pr prolonging the period of gestation but fetal uh, it will not have any impact on the perinatal outcome okay 
another so another part that we can give in the treatment would be topical emollients because of the itch itching problem so these are topical emollients with aqueous cream with or without menthol okay and number four treatment that can be given is vitamin k but vitamin k uh, uh, like uh, is given when the patient have got reduced absorption of um, dietary fats or, or presence of steatorrhea or if the prothrombin time is done and the coagulation studies are performed abnormal prothrombin time then they offer vitamin k treatment and what, what is a formulation it is water soluble formula formulation menadiol uh, uh, sodium phosphate at a dose of 10 mg daily so if you have to sum up what are the options of treatment first you will speak about sedative that we discussed chlorpheniramine second you will speak about uroso third uh, to like prolong the gestation third you will speak about topical emollient and fourth you will speak about vitamin k treatment so this is the sum up of the maternal of the treatment that can be offered to the patient if the icp has been diagnosed now this part i was speaking like uh, if the patient has mild icp mild icp then time of birth they are saying 40 weeks of pregnancy and because uh, in previous slides we just uh, read that if the mild icp is there stillbirth is same as background risk so it's fine for every patient they just want it to deliver by 40 weeks or later so mild icp patient will go uh, uh, will uh, they recommend time of delivery by 40 weeks important for both part 2 and part 3 people moderate icp uh, like um, uh, uh, as we read previously that uh, background risk of uh, stillbirth will increase after 30 to 39 weeks so they want time to, uh, to deliver them by 38 to 39 weeks of gestation. Severe ICP, uh, stillbirth will increase after 35. So they will uh, want the termination of the pregnancy by 35 to 36 weeks. These are the things, uh, these are the time limits of the uh, time of birth. If the, co if the co comorbid fo factors are not there, but if any other associated comorbid factors such as GDM, preeclampsia, multiple gestation, then it will be individualized uh, approach because they, they would further increase chance of stillbirth. So this part is important to know for part two and part three people because part two people, any question may come and for part three people, usually they would give a, you a scenario and they will give certain limit of bile acid and then they will ask you management plan. And so they, um, that has already been asked in this exam about the um, uh, obstetric cholestasis. So they, both part two and part two people have to remember this. Now this was this was till the you know anti uh, intra antenatal care. Now coming to the intrapartum care. So intrapartum care in the case of in case when the patient is having obstetric cholestasis. So what they say mode of birth is not affected by icp okay and now uh, cfm continuous fetal monitoring to be offered when the bile acids are more than 100 or more so this is again different from the previous guideline in previous guideline they are offering continuous fetal monitoring to all women but now they are recommending continuous fetal monitoring to the uh, woman if the bile acid is more than 100 okay what they say there is a insufficient uh, evidence uh, for continuous fetal monitoring if bile acid is low micromole less than 100 okay but if the risk factors are there like gdm preeclampsia multipetal pregnancy these are going to increase the chances of adverse uh, perinatal outcomes so consideration for uh, like uh, in uh, cfm can be done and um, uh, so that will be individualized approach now, meconium stain like we already know it will be more there on my moderate and severe. So, uh, like if the um, at that time there will be again individualized approach, they are not routinely saying to do CFM. Apart from this, any kind of anesthesia or analgesia can be offered to the woman. And uh, like uh, there is no increased risk of PPH. So, standard care 
for the active management for third stage of labor would be followed like previously we used to say there is a risk of pps but this guideline uh, so there are changes from the previous guideline in previous guideline everyone was offered cfm and uh, like they were worried for pps but in this guideline uh, cfm only recommended if the bile acids are more than 100 and all other people with the risk factors or comorbidities they would have um, you know individualized approach apart from this uh, there will be standard care for third stage of the labor so there is no increase in in pps according to them okay now postnatal follow-up this i already told you that in postnatal like follow-up to be done four weeks okay this question is asked in part three it would be asked in part two also so if the four at the four weeks postnatal there is a resolution of each and liver function test and bile acid then the diagnosis is confirmed to be intrahepatic cholestasis of pregnancy but itching or the biochemical abnormalities if they uh, persist more than six weeks no uh, it is six weeks okay then uh, on the ba basis of history and examination finding referral to hepatologist may be required so uh, this this whole uh, slide, uh, slide is important for part two and part three people because uh, as i already told in the part three also they wanted to know what are the new changes are there in this viva okay so this these are two postnatal follow-up these were the new changes okay and uh, now a uh, few updates are there so this is the, uh, here the pregnancy part of obstetric cholestasis is, is done now coming to the this is also you know a change like pre, in previous guideline if the patient has an obstetric cholestasis they used to say no to coc but now the they have changed according to the new guideline icp will not influence the choice of contraception or hrt now uh, like if the patient has icp and cholestasis secondary to chc that means patient once took chc and developed cholestasis in those conditions only uh, like uh, coc will not be given that means these patient have a history of coc induced uh, obstetric cholestasis so uh, only these are the people where coc will not uh, coc will not be given this woman has to take progesterone only contraceptive or non hormonal method so this is changed from the new guideline apart from this they have already also added hrt like what they say like uh, if the patient has icp history and they want hrt so uh, they can be given there would be no con if there is no contraindication to use in another uh, words what i can uh, what we can say that having icp does not uh, does not influence the woman uh, chance to receive hrt so these are updates with regards to contraceptive part of obstetric cholestasis now again this part is also important the, there is an update there previous pre, previous guideline they said the risk of recurrence is 45 to 90 percent but in this new guideline they have removed that number so i know that you know now you guys it is difficult when the new guideline comes and the updates are there because you have to delete your old data and you know you have to put new data it is difficult but you have to do that because the examiner they are wanting you to you know pinpoint or focus or highlight on the updates so uh, previous guideline they gave a number of recurrence that was 45 to 90 percent but in this guideline they have not given any number of recurrence so just say that there is an increased chance of recurrence of icp in subsequent pregnancies okay now another update from the new guideline that they want liver function test and bile acid concentration to be done in future pregnancy along with the booking uh, blood investigation so this is new update like what uh, what they want when the patient comes pregnant again so at the time of booking bloods that is usually done less than 10 weeks of pregnancy 
so along with all booking bloods that is done as a part of antenatal visit they will also do bile acid concentration and uh, all liver function test why you already know that uh, that will be used as a baseline reference the uh, so that when if the patient go and develops icp so they will use this as a baseline and they will be able to compare like how much the change or the rise is there so this is also a new update from the previous guideline so any one of you have got any question till now or anything that is not clear before i move ahead okay so should i continue now uh, like a few updates from this is like uh, some table uh, flow charts this is a good flow charts now if the patient is coming with the itching okay pregnant woman with the itching you look at the skin skin appears normal no lesions only scratch marks you have got suspicion then this will give you suspicion of obstetric cholestasis please do lft and bile acid but if the skin is abnormal that means you find some lesions and in that situation uh, there could be a alternative diagnosis so take good history do an examination do investigation then find out there could be possibility of other diagnosis okay now women with icp uh, uh like uh, if uh, this is mild we know this is moderate and this is severe if the moderate and severe icp structured history and examination to find out whether any other diagnosis is there or not as i already told if the diagnosis is clear then they will not do any additional liver investigations but if any atypical symptoms uh, uh, is a typical symptom early uh, presentation then in that situation they will do investigation and what kind of investigation that could be done like uh, additional uh, liver investigation may be considered in the woman with atypical feature such as early uh, onset marked transaminitis jaundice fever and the post uh, partum resolution not occurs so these are the atypical features then if these atypical features are there then all uh, uh, the investigation would include other liver in liver ultrasound liver hepatitis screen apart from this liver uh, viral hepatitis screen liver autoimmune test and coagulation screen so this part is important to know it is given only in the flow charts not in the right line that if a typical presentation that set is early onset of icp trans aminized levels are high jaundice is there fever is there then patient is not getting a resolution after four weeks of postnatal that means some other problem could be there so to find out the other problem consider doing liver ultrasound viral hepatitis screen liver autoimmune test and coagulation screen so this part is important okay now so, uh, so i put it, if i put a summary so mild icp mild icp we already know 19 to 39 and uh, like if it is uh, like retesting is done if it is um, clinically indicated or if ongoing each because bile acids may increase or patient will may further go into moderate and severe usually mild icp background risk for uh, stillbirth is same as background risk so they want to deliver them by 40 weeks and preterm rate is six, uh, 16 percent okay so you may get question from here in mild icp preterm rate is 16 percent now is a uh, moderate icp 40 to 49 uh, stillbirth is similar to the general population till 38 weeks because of that they want them to deliver by 38 to 39 weeks of pregnancy preterm birth is 19 percent maybe these numbers are important for you guys severe icp it is 100 uh, micromole more, more than or equal to that still birth is very is high and um, it is same at 35 weeks therefore they want 
them to deliver by 35 to 36 weeks of pregnancy. Preterm is 30%. Now, this is the summary of care. Now, this part is this table everyone has to remember. Everyone, part two and part three people, it is very good a table for you know doing revision. So, uh, this is pruritus, uh, this is pruritus gravidarum, less than 19. So apart from this, this is mild ICP. In mild ICP, if the itch present, then they will check, they will see them one or two weekly and delivery by 40 weeks and still uh, preterm is 16% in moderate. If the itch persists, the, uh, it will be like one to two weekly testing and uh, they want them to deliver by 38 to 39 weeks and uh, uh, like uh, uh, preterm rate is uh, 19 in severe uh, the severe they are not offering you know routine screening because according to them it would be almost the same it will not going to change the diagnosis they want severe more than 100 to deliver by 35 to 36 weeks of pregnancy and preterm is 30 percent and preterm is 30 percent so the routine use of ucda usually not done because they are not going to help any any um, uh, they have no impact on the still but like perinatal outcome is not going to be changed if the uh, ucda is used or, use or not additional liver investigation ultrasound viral hepatitis screen autoimmune test uh, and prothrombin also so these are done when atyp when when uh, some atypical features are there such as early onset fever uh, jaundice transaminitis and the postpartum uh, resolution does not occur so this is the sort of a summary of care so like uh, just do revision uh, just do your guideline and quickly before the exam you look at this table then your uh, your um, like uh, your whole you'll be able to answer because the summary is done anyone of you have got any question any question Mama, I had a cookie can I ask one yes, question? Yes. Uh, yes. I just wanted to be clear on the indication for the ursodi oxycholic acid. So, is there a clear cut time when we start this? No. Basically, you will start uh, basically whenever the patient is coming. So, uh, uh, this, uh, uh, when the patient comes at whatever the gestation, you will uh, do investigation. You will confirm that, like, you will try to reach to diagnosis of uh, ICP then you will explain that to the patient these are the risk and benefit then you can start it so it cannot be a clear cut you know a time when you will start uroso it is it depends on the patient symptoms when the patient is coming to you yes ma'am have i answered your question yes ma'am any any other question okay now some questions so, uh, like, uh, these are, like I try to cover up the topic, so I put the questions, so it helps. So, 34 uh, weeks, 34-year-old uh, woman with severe pruritus at 34 weeks, okay? Now, there is a scratching. Now, see the question. There is evidence of scratching, but no lesions, okay? No rash. And LFT abnormal and normal bile acid. Standard serological screen is also normal. So, what could be the diagnosis? What could be the diagnosis? Patient is afebrile, scratching, pruritus, no rash. So, what could be the diagnosis? Diagnosis is only one. Gestational, it, it, gestational pruritus, ma'am. Gestational. No, actually, 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 you have no. to say intrahepatic cholestasis of pregnancy. Yeah, because see. they have not done, they have, investigation has, bile acid has not been done. But if you consider symptom, a symptom of the patient, then it will go to intrahepatic cholestasis of pregnancy mm -hmm. because, because this question is formed previously and then the guideline is new. But again, the clue for this, a severe pruritus, 34, late trimester, severe pruritus, even okay. only scratching marks are there, but no rash. So it could okay. be uh, cholestasis only. 
Okay, now the 26 year old Nelly Paris at 33 weeks of gestation presented with generalized each worse at night, also on palms and soul. She is diagnosed to have ICP, was started on urodeoxycholic acid and chlorpheniramine. Which one of the following is true with regard to counseling of the woman? So you will be able to answer because. I'm five, ma'am. Yes, very good. Because uh, this question is old, but I have changed it to make it new. So answer is five. Now postnatal follow-up to be done after four weeks. Okay. This we already re read. This is all about the postnatal follow-up. Now a uh, few EMQs. So a 30-year-old woman first pregnancy at 30 weeks of gestation with each involving palm and soul. LFT shows normal bilirubin, mild elevation of enzymes, ultrasound uh, demonstrates normal fetal growth. So what should be done next? I'm um, request serum bilateral G. Yes, very good. G is the answer. So you are suspecting uh, uh, study called, uh, click ICP, so you will request bile acids. Very good. So now, uh, say, like 28 year old woman in first uh, uh, pregnancy admitted 37 weeks, five week history of generalized itching, uh, more predominantly on sole of her feet and palms. LFT shows elevated alkaline phosphatase, bilirubin is 20, as part, uh, AST is 100. Um, ALT is 110, bile acid is 110 micromole. On examination, 3 contraction per 10 minute. Vaginal examination, 5 cm dilated, meconium stained liquor. What could be the diagnosis? Some continuous electronic monitoring to be done, ma'am. Yes. Because uh, though this is an uh, old question, but I, I again changed according to new guideline. So um, according to new guideline, if bile acid is more than 100, then only they recommend CTG. So I made the bile acid more than 100. So now the answer is CTG. Very good. But if we put bile, uh, bile acid less than 100, then answer will CTG will not be there according to new guideline. Okay, so the, yeah, this part I have already explained. So what they recommend, offer CFM to the woman when the bile acids are 100 or more. Okay, 27-year-old woman attend the uh, assessment unit at 34 weeks. History of each pain. Abdominal examination, fetal is cephalic. Uterus noted to be contracting regularly. Vaginal examination, cervix is 2 cm. Her um, AST 56, ALT 60, alkaline phosphate 1000, bilirubin 10. Ultrasound has uh, shown normal fetal growth, like her volume. Viral screen, autoimmune screens are negative, but bile acids are elevated. So what you will do? So, what you will do? So, patient has obstetric cholestasis. I am giving you clues. There could be possibility we have to deliver patient early. So, what you will give if you have to, uh, if we consider that there could consider be treatment. Beta. Consider beta methazone administration. Yes. So, you have to consider giving beta methazone administration because we already know if the there could be possibility we can deliver we have to deliver baby early okay though it is not routine but according to the question demand answer should be this only okay so 30 year old woman presented 36 weeks itching with arm palms and soles alt st uh, 90 and 100 bile acids noted to be elevated all um, viral screen autoimmune screen are negative abnormal prothrombin time Fetus is appropriately grown for the age. 
mam vitamin k mam very good so we just read from the guideline that uh, vitamin k is a treatment if the uh, if the presence of steatorrhea or if abnormal prothrombin time okay so very good now another question uh, a 32 year old woman present in maternity assessment unit at 33 weeks itching palm and soles affecting quality of life unable to sleep at night she is still working not able to focus because of lack of sleep clinical examination no rash baby is fine bile acid like bile acid is 57 and raised um, amino transferase so what is the initial management so bile acid is 57 b ma'am b very good bile acid 57 57 bile acid means patient belongs to moderate category moderate is 40 to 99 so for moderate category patient to be booked for induction um, patient to be delivered by 38 to 39 weeks very good now a uh, 32 year old with 33 weeks of gestation uh, itching on palm and sole she is affecting quality of life unable to sleep she is still working not focused because of the lack of sleep blood test shows alt is rise bile acid is 110 what will be the initial management and again b ma'am 35 to 36 again, weeks yes. induction because now it is severe so you will consider delivery by 35 to 36 weeks of pregnancy i just mm-hmm. want you to guys ha huh, yes ma'am why can we not uh, have the option e in the initial management because she is distressed with the itching so should we not treat that with antihistaminics and do her okay BTLF so first of all cannot be an answer so they uh, like they are saying um, lf uh, like uh, a liver function test to, to be done one to two weekly okay so it is not routine weekly number one number two uh, they are uh, they are not do, starting urodeoxycholic acid for everyone and antihistamine yeah they can give but it is not weekly it is uh, one to two weekly because of that this is not the answer if they write here one to two weekly then answer will become e right ma'am okay okay so this part we have already done okay so page 35 year old 34 weeks present uh, with a complaints of pruritus especially palm and sole with a good fetal movement pregnancy uneventful gives history of induction 38 weeks uh, for obstetric cholestasis inspection skin shows scratch no rash Okay, against uh, see no rash. Liver function test is fine. Bile acid is 110. You obstruct, uh, you suspect obstetric cholestasis. How would you counsel with regards to obstetric cholestasis? So is a thirty percent ma'am. Yes, very good. Mm. Yes, because one one ten, that means severe uh, obstetric cholestasis, and severe obstetric cholestasis it is thirty percent preterm. So mild it is sixteen, moderate it is nineteen, severe it is thirty percent preterm. Okay, so this that's all about a uh, clinic uh, um, obstetric cholestasis. now some updates i want to give you about uh, um, you know acute fatty liver of pregnancy and hepatitis why i am doing that because you know in the uh, with uh, this is important for part uh, two people more because uh, i i wanted to just cover the all uh, liver related topics that, that are the source of questions okay so uh, because um, you have to know these topics a little details so i am putting that detail 
so that I cover the liver part of the uh, for you know part two and three. So acute fatty liver of pregnancy is rare, but it is lethal for both mother and baby if the diagnosis is delayed. It is more common in primary gravida, more associated with the male fetus, low BMI, okay, low BMI, and multiple pregnancy. Why it is important? I'm highlighting the things because in part two, uh, you know, you, you will get EMQ or you will get a question where all these factors they wrote that will and sometimes you know it is difficult to diagnose what you are dealing with so these will help in diagnosis you cause uh, uk obstetric surveillance system they show maternal mortality is two percent perinatal mortality is 11 percent now uh, what could be the clinical features it is important to know the clinical features that helps you in solving the questions usually the patient will present after 30 weeks or near term and there would be on nausea anorexia and malaise the patient will present severe vomiting and abdominal pain because of this right quadrant you know uh, right hypochondrium tenderness would be there apart from this uh, there would be uh, coexisting features of preeclampsia will be there but it will be mild okay the, there will you will find rise in a blood pressure and proteinuria but it will be either mild or absent this line is very important for you guys because people get confused people put this as a help syndrome so as the preeclampsia symptoms are there but it is mild okay so hypertension and proteinuria will be mild or they may be absent also if you look at the liver functions like uh, transaminase level will be three to ten folds high alkaline phosphatase will be raised but alkaline phosphatase you already know it arises already in pregnancy and coagulopathy is there and dic is there uh, if the like uh, um, if it is 90 uh, percent often presenting with a feature in the postmortem partum and maybe severe because liver we know it is associated with a uh, formation of the coagulation factors and if the liver is at fault you can understand that there would be problem with the coagulation now they also associated with the acute kidney injury they would be like because the metabolism is now getting deranged so ammonia will be high and lactic acidosis because of that patient will develop fulminant liver failure and hepatic encephalopathy okay hyper another important point that you have to remember and you will find in the questions hypoglycemia would be there and it affects 70 percent of the women so hypoglycemia is too much marked apart from this uh, uh, there are features of uh, diabetes in cpds is there polyuria polydipsia okay because it is association uh, of di with alp and hepatic metabolism of placental vas vas vasoprenase is impaired because of this diabetic insipidious features are also there so this you know understanding all this part is much important that helps in answering of your questions confidently now again sum up of the clinical features vomiting severe pain abdominal pain uh, hypoglycemia 70 percent there would be hyperuricemia, but it will be out of proportion the, uh, to other features of preeclampsia. As we already know, mild preeclampsia can be there in 90%, coagulopathy in 90%, often without thrombocytopenia, uh, diabetic insipidus, raised ammonia, encephalopathy, raised transaminases, and acute kidney injury associated. Now, what it could be the treatment? Treatment usually, you know, uh, it is symptomatic. So, for coagulation profile, they are giving fresh frozen plasma and vitamin K. Hypoglycemia, we already know they will give large amount of glucose. Antibiotics, if infection is there, they also give consider giving N-acetylcysteine. So, I have seen one question uh, where the answer was N-acetylcysteine in a AFLP. Urine volume, if it is too much high because the DI is associated, then desmopressin. Once the patient is stabilized, then deliver the baby. So this much you have to know, then you will be able to answer your questions. Now uh, give me the answers. 
so 39 year old woman presenting with right upper quadrant pain polydipsia in third trimester appears to be jaundice and tell she is vomiting for two days examination bmi 35 blood shows raised transaminase and hyperuricemia now hyperuricemia is the key word here creatinine fine mild leukocytosis blood pressure is high and plus three protein urea so now if you see blood pressure and protein urea you will put the answer as preeclampsia now to put the answer as uh, a uh, uh, acute fatty liver of pregnancy hyperuricemia uh, polydipsia vomiting jaundice so these are going towards uh, acute fatty liver of pregnancy okay so hyper vomiting right upper quadrant pain jaundice mild leukocytosis and uh, raised transaminase hyperuricemia so because of that though you can you can be confused many of the people if they don't know the alp they will put the answer as preeclampsia because bp and protein are high but the answer is acute fatty liver of pregnancy is it clear okay another question so you you guys have to answer this now a 28 year old nali para attends maternity assessment unit at 36 weeks because uh, she appeared yellow when she looked at the mirror vomiting for a week feeling thirsty now you can see yellow uh, vomiting feeling thirsty that means diabetic insipidus bulvar mm -hmm. conjunctiva appears yellowish abdominal examination shows right tender right tenderness in right upper quadrant pulse rate uh, is 95 temperature 37 blood pressure 140 uh, 92 oxygen saturation 100 dipstick 1 plus protein 1 plus leukocytes and um, bilirubin is 200 uh, trans aminase is 150 wbc is 14 prothrombin 10 20 second blood glucose no bl blood glucose level is 2.1 millimole per liter so what could be the diagnosis what could be the diagnosis one person should speak at least acute acute hey, ma'am acute fatty liver hey, ma'am okay yeah hey, that is fine now give me the uh, why you are saying a buzzwords for saying a i'm hypoglycemia ma'am yes hypoglycemia no uh, yellow thirsty uh apart from this uh, uh, like uh, uh, hypoglycemia right quadrant pain right quadrant pain though right quadrant can uh, pain can uh, occur in help also but hypoglycemia so it is it is alp acute fatty liver of pregnancy okay okay this question came in my exam only so what is the recurrence rate for uh, acute fatty liver of pregnancy any any anyone any idea any twenty five percent yes twenty five percent so uh, so recurrence rate in subsequent pregnancy is twenty five percent and why uh, uh, acute fatty liver of pregnancy occurs because the woman is heterozygous for LCHAD deficiency that is long chain 3 hydroxy acyl coenzyme A dehydrogenase. This is a disorder of mitochondrial feta fatty acid oxidation. So, this you have to remember. You can just remember LCHAD because uh, uh, I have seen question why it happens also. So this part is important and recurrence number both are important. Acute fatty liver of pregnancy, there are a lot of questions. Now, the few updates I want to give about the viral hepatitis. Many, many times even the people send me so many queries about hepatitis. So uh, the, what I will just only cover what is important for the exam. I'm not covering whole hepatitis. So, uh, main the question come from B, C, 
and some time from E. So I'll speak about that, those only. So the, you can go through this chart. This is very important and I've highlighted the important part. Okay. So mainly the question will scatter around hepatitis B. So hepatitis B, we already know it is a blood borne uh, virus. Transmission is sex, sexual, vertical by, or by a blood. Now the question will come from here. Okay. So they will give you in a question, uh, uh, surface antigen positive and uh, E antigen positive. What is transfer? Uh, what are the rate of transfer to the baby? So it is 90 to 95 percent. This this number is very important because 90 to 95 percent will be the rate of mother to baby transmission, vertical transmission. Second choice. Um, Sometimes they will give surface antigen positive, but e, antigen E is negative. Then what will be the chances of pregnancy? Then it is nearing 10 percent, or this is the range. 5 to 20, uh, 2 to 20, 15 percent. Okay, and uh, like trans, uh, and th so uh, this is vertical transmission and usually occurs at the time of delivery. Um, but trans, trans placental uh, uh, transmission can also be there. So, percentage of trans placental transmission is 5 percent. Okay, so these numbers are important. So, now I'll just give certain basic. In hepatitis, we know there are three uh, antigens are there. S for surface antigen and uh, another antigen is E and C for core antigen. So um, if the um, uh, like uh, surface antigen is there, that means patient is infected, got infection. Okay. But if the E antigen is there, E antigen, presence of E antigen is marker for a replication of virus okay now you uh, um, so if e is there that means virus is uh, uh, rep, uh, doing replication in the body so because of that if both antigen surface antigen and e antigen are positive it is nearing 90 to 95 percent uh, transplacent uh, like um, mother to child transmission is there second uh, if the only surface antigen and e is negative that means replication is not going on in the body so it will be 2 to 20, 15 or it will be 10 percent in the exam uh, you will find option is 10 percent these numbers i am putting from uh, nelson percy book but in the exam usually this number you will get you will not get the range you will get one answer that is a 10 percent okay transplacental i have told this is five percent now if the mother is neonates are infected they have more than 90 percent of chance of becoming chronic carrier they can associate it with um, cirrhosis and hepatocellular carcinoma so because of that uh, we treat them okay and most uh, sensitive test for viral activity and transmission is hb uh, hbv dna this is the most sensitive test okay may be asked in the exam now whenever the babies are born you already know for the active and chronic carrier hepatitis b immunoglobulin and hepatitis b vaccine is given within 24 hours and this 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 is both now if you are giving vaccine uh, then uh, uh, and uh, and immunoglobulin and immunoglobulin both so it is both active and passive transmission of immunity uh, it is both active and passive uh, immunization so uh, it is effective in preventing both infection and chronic carrier state to 985 to 95 percent because of that you will find this in the question so mother is baby is born mother has hepatitis b so what treatment to be given to baby so this is the answer many questions you will find from here apart from this if the if the like mother has got hepatitis b but the babies are immunized we are giving immunization then there would be no problem in the breastfeeding they can breastfeed because even if they are positive but the baby is already immunized so there will be no problem to the baby okay now this again very important question you know you will find now this uh, i have taken from british you know hepatic society guideline you will find this in other also like infant has got high uh, high risk of vertical transmission 
so these are the uh, this you have to remember if the maternal e antigen i already know it is a marker for replication is positive if there is no antibody for this and if viral uh, if the uh, vir uh, hpv virus dna is more than uh, uh, 1 into 10 to the power 6 units at any time in the pregnancy so this must be very high viral load and if during uh, mat uh, during a maternal hpv infection anti um, anti core antigen antibody igm igm that means active infection it is positive and if the baby birth weight is less than 1500 so these are the indication if the mother has this so these are indication baby will get immunoglobulin within 24 hours of birth to increase to reduce infectivity and the vaccine and the immunoglobulin they has to be given at different site so you can see it from this infant with high risk of tra vertical transmission should receive 250 uh, international unit of uh, hepatitis b immunoglobulin im and at a different site injurex b that is the um, hepatitis b vaccine uh, 0.5 milli uh, ml im so these to be given at different site so people have sometime when you do question the answer would be a hepatitis b vaccination sometime you do question and answer will be hepatitis b vaccination and immunoglobulin and you guys become uh, uh, come in a trouble you know what where what to put because so this uh, will help your query that if you find all this in the answer then you answer will be uh, like immunoglobulin and vaccine both but if this is not there then child uh, like uh, baby will already be given vaccine because indication for immunoglobulin is not there so these are the indication of immunoglobulin that you have to know already know this this is uh, this i have taken from as i already show told you from the you know their liver uh, hepatitis guideline from the medicine part of royal college hepatitis guideline i have put this answer question but this is this indications are all also given i think in the biva guideline so you have to know that because that will help in solving your questions apart from this treatment part usually the questions are not coming but i just put it again from the you know medicine hepatitis guideline what they say if the hpv dna is more than two lakhs then uh, or hepatitis b hepatitis s antigen it is more than four log per 10 iu then to prevent antiviral treatment to be given to prevent a uh, vertical transmission from 24 weeks and what is the treatment of choice in pregnancy that is uh teno uh disoproxel okay Just, though i have not seen question from here but you should know this okay but because this is important and as i was making the answer from hepatitis guideline so i thought of making putting this important point also now few things that you have to understand as i already told the you will find in the they will give you a question and in the question you know sometime uh, they will give antigen antibody then they ask you to pick a choice to find out you know wh what is the what is the option so uh, so if if you have got a basic knowledge the uh, of this then you know your answering uh, you, uh, becomes very easy now uh, uh, hepatitis b s uh, usually we find this this is hepatitis b s antigen or hepatitis b surface antigen it is surface antigen uh, detected in high levels if the acute or chronic hepatitis b infection so if the hbsg is positive then patient is infectious so you you guys can correlate whenever we do we write the test in the pregnancy or we write a test in clinic we always write to do hepatitis b antigen so this we are testing because we want to know that our patient is in fact uh, is having infection or not okay now coming to the second antigen that is e antigen so e antigen is a marker of active virus replication so if the virus is replicating 
so we know there would be a lot more number of uh, 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 lots of uh, viruses roaming about in the body so there would be high viral load okay so if e is there that means the person is highly infective because of that in maternal to child transmission when s and e they come together the chances of vertical transmission to baby becomes 90 to 95 percent okay now uh, so apart from this c is also there c is the core antigen but the core antigen uh, cannot be measured from the blood so measurement can be done for b antigen and e antigen only so there are two antigens that you should know of now coming to antibody so antibody could be uh, so coming to the first antibody to surface antigen or s antigen now if the antibody it develops already that means that patient is getting recover patient is getting recovered from hepatitis b infection so we are uh, we are happy because the recovery started already and the immunity is there but now the one important thing here if we find hepatitis b antigen and antibody both then we'll understand the patient is recovering but there could be another scenario where we we are finding uh, antibody but we are not finding antigen so how it is possible that antibody is there but there is no antigen so what could be the problem yes if if the patient we have given vaccine so they will have anti uh, uh, hbs or uh, antibody to surface antigen and antigen will not be positive okay this also comes in exam after b and uh, uh, surface antibody now moving to core antibody or c as i already told core antigen is intracellular antigen so if we cannot measure it from blood so but the antibody will be there so if the antibody is there uh, uh, like um, uh, it appears when, uh, when uh, um, at the onset of symptoms of acute hepatitis b and anti hbc it persists for life if anti hbc is there that means either ongoing infection or previous infection okay and uh, with hepatitis b virus being uh, unidentified uh, like in an undefined time frame okay so anti uh, hbc if the it is there that means uh, like uh, the, it can be there uh, it is all uh, at the onset of symptoms or it, it it will persist for whole life okay so it will indicate previous infection or ongoing infection also now uh, uh, c uh, this is anti uh, hbc but if i uh, now there could be uh, this must be they, they would be saying about igg but if igm antibody is there to core antigen that is igm anti hbc so this will indicate recent infection we already know that igm will always indicate recent infection recent infection means less than 6 month old okay so this in the, the presence of igm anti hbc will indicate acute infection okay so this is the marker of acute infection now antibody to e so if the e antibody is there that, then that means the body is recovering and antibody started coming that means virus is not replicating so there will be low viral um, there would be low hbv dna or there will be low viral load so if the e antigen is there high viral load if antibody has come then there will be low viral in, uh, viral load that means uh, like uh, patient is in the recovery phase because the viral load is low so um, this this is the interpretation now uh, it is confusing okay so i have just put that in the table now i'll uh, speak everything again now if your patient has got uh, surface antigen negative and anti uh, uh, all antigen and all antibodies are negative like no antigen no antibody nothing is there then your patient will be susceptible that means this patient can get hepatitis b virus infection at any day okay now come to second scenario 
एंटीजन इज नेगेटिव ओके एंटीजन इज नेगेटिव बट टू एंटीबॉडीज आर देयर सरफेस एंटीबॉडी एंड कोर एंटीबॉडी टू एंटीबॉडीज आर देयर दैट मीन इफ द एंटीजन इज नेगेटिव दैट मीन्स द एक्टिव इन्फेक्शन इज नॉट गोइंग ऑन and if the surface antigen or cron anti uh, uh, like antibody to surface antigen or antibody to c is there uh, that means there had been a uh, infection but now the patient is immune due to natural infection okay now this part i have already told that if everything is negative only anti hbs is positive that is antibody to surface antigen is positive only then only one uh, uh, everything negative only one antibody positive that is surface antigen antibody then that means the patient is immune because of vaccination okay so this this is usually asked in the questions okay so um, this you have to remember now patient has got no natural infection because if the natural infection is there anti hbc would also be there so uh, when the patient is immune because of natural infection patient has got two antibodies uh, s antibody and c antibody okay but when the patient is immune because of vaccination then only one antibody is present because uh, like uh, 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 because we usually give uh, that uh, 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 like injurex vaccine usually it is uh like uh, it is a uh, recombinant vaccine and uh, usually it is it consists of s antigen because of that uh, anti anti hbs will be there now another thing uh, clinical thing that is important here now sometime what will happen that patient will come and say that yes i have got an uh, hepatitis vaccine i have taken and uh, but you know he has forgotten and you don't know anything then what you will do whether you have to give her give the patient antibody or not you will do anti hbs testing you will write the anti hbs and if if it is i think percentage i am not remembering but if it is in the blood more than 10 international unit that means patient is immune and if it is less then you have to give another uh, dose of uh, then hepatitis b vaccination has to be given so it would do have a clinical you know in your practice also importance is there is it clear any question till now a little confusing but i try to you know uh, make it as simple as possible any question anyone till here any question no question okay now come here if surface antigen is positive and ig m is positive then that means acute infection okay and hepatitis surface antigen and uh, uh, like anti hbc im igg m is positive then it is a positive these are positive and anti hbs is negative that means recovery has not been started because when the body starts recovering the surface antibody will come so this is active infection okay come here now here uh, like uh, um uh, um uh, surface antigen positive anti hbc antibody positive but im antibody is negative if at uh, the moment im becomes negative uh, so it will be possibility of chronic infection why we are saying chronic infection because we are able to detect hbs ag antigen if hbs anti uh, um, hbs anti uh, uh, hbs ag antigen that is sir if any time you find you are able to detect surface antigen patient would be uh, 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 having infection now to find out whether it is acute and chronic you will get it from here if igm antibody is there it will be acute infection but if uh, anti hbc antibody is there and uh, like uh, um, uh, and uh, then it um, if only um, like I, igm anti hbs is absent or anti uh, uh, surface antibody is absent that means recovery has not been started okay recovery has not been started and it stays for 6 month so it appears more than 6 month so igm 
uh, 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 core antigen antibody it will it will not be there in the blood more than six months and nth sbs also not there that means recovery has not been started so patient will be chronically infected so these are the mar when uh, marker for chronic infection another issue where antigen uh, antigen and surface antibody are negative only at nthbc is positive now how it is possible that antibody is coming positive because there had been no infection how without infection or uh, of uh, uh, hepatitis b virus how anti uh, how core antibody can come positive so that is that means either patient is having resolving infection or false positive test or chronic low level infection so interpretation is not clear but answer will come one of these okay so uh, though i tried to you know make it as simple as possible so the, therefore the interpretation in the exam becomes easy to solve your question so is it clear or you guys want me to explain it again is it clear people and is it clear is it uh, i'll just summarize it again if everything is negative then patient is susceptible if antigen is negative but antibodies are there if uh, antigen negative and antibodies are there then immunity because of natural infection but if only one marker is positive all negative that is surface antibody immunity because of infection any time you find hbs antigen positive you have to think that patient is having infection then you have to find out whether it is uh, acute or chronic if igm is there it has to be acute infection if igm becomes negative it will be chronic infection apart from this if uh, like uh, if uh, you have got only one antibody that is core antibody positive with no antigen so it is very difficult to understand how the chronic and only one antibody is there and everything is negative because uh, then either the it is a resolved infection or it is false positive test or it is low level of chronic infection so that this way you know you have to understand though i tried my best to explain you now hepatitis c usually one question comes vertical mode of transmission it is three to five percent okay this percentage is asked in the exam but if hepatitis b or hepatitis uh, uh, hiv both are there then the risk of transmission will increase to 20 percent so hepatitis c alone vertical transmission three to five if it is co-infection with hiv risk of transmission is to increase to 20 percent okay now i'll just i'll be just finishing only few questions are left because i have covered the most of all the part so now here the 30 year old woman in third pregnancy unbooked for mumbai at 30 28 weeks she felt unwell at 32 weeks of gestation develops jaundice fatigue nausea rapidly fulminant, fulminant hepatic failure in cephalopathy she transferred to the liver unit but dies so what could be the diagnosis anyone any uh, anyone can tell what is the diagnosis so patient has jaundice fatigue nausea severe and fulminant hepatic failure and encephalopathy and dies what could be the answer any guess any guess hepatic encephalopathy doctor i mean uh, acute fatty liver no no for acute fatty liver patient has to have hyperuricemia hypoglycemia or uh, patient should have uh, like uh, all these features should be there but here no feature is there so uh, like uh, uh, and uh, uh, like uh, she becomes unwell with a jaundice fatigue and nausea unbooked patient so uh, it is like uh, it is yeah. severe uh, hepatitis e hepatitis e has got uh, 
uh, so very uh, you know devastating course in the pregnancy and the yeah. patient will deteriorate so fast that patient will die even i myself as a pa- have a patient the patient develops is jaundice at the night i saw her in the morning she developed ascites and next day she she died okay so this is very bad hepatitis e in pregnancy it is very difficult to save patient so hepatitis e virus transmitted by fecal oral route and there is a marked increase in mortality in pregnant women if the virus is acquired in third trimester there is increased uh, incidence of hepatic encephalopathy and fulminant liver failure and uh, mortality rate is 15 to 20% maternal death is more likely with the infection in late pregnancy this hepatitis e virus has a pre pre delication for the pregnant woman so answer is hepatitis e because um, features of hepatite uh, acute fatty liver they are not fitting here okay so it is hepatitis e only now okay so here uh, the patient uh, has come with a 12 weeks and she is positive for anti mitochondrial antibody okay everything is fine but the uh, anti mitochondrial antibodies are there what could be the diagnosis anti mitochondrial antibody it is a marker for primary biliary cholangitis so answer has to be primary biliary cholangitis okay so you uh, for part 2 people it is important the moment you say anti mitochondrial antibody then you immediately put the answer as a primary biliary cholangitis okay now uh, like uh, 28 year old woman presented at 12 weeks of pregnancy with fever uh, malaise vomiting lft show bilirubin 24 ast lt high alkaline phosphate is 800 so what could be the diagnosis so another clue i can give you here patient presented viral with fever viral hepatitis yes viral hepatitis this is viral hepatitis because liver malaise and vomiting fever and raised transaminases fever and raised transaminases is giving the clue okay the 20, 32 year old with 32 weeks of pregnancy with itching palm and sole uh, bilirubin 10 ast alt 15 58 and, and bile acid is 26 what is the diagnosis obstetric cholestasis obstetric cholestasis yes that is very clear severe itching involving palm and sole bile acid 26 it has to be obstetric cholestasis so a 19 year old girl with 32 weeks of pregnancy nausea vomiting abdominal pain and malaise for two days duration glasgow coma scale is 11 okay and she was diagnosed with preeclampsia 28 weeks LFT shows uh, like bilirubin 24, uh, AST and ALT 120 and 100. What is the diagnosis? Now the Glasgow Coma Scale is 11. So this is the basic clue. That means the patient is getting deteriorated very fast. Yeah, you mean fatty liver? Yeah. Yes, this is acute fatty liver. Uh, fatty liver of pregnancy okay because uh, is so much deterioration it is they are giving picture of fulminant hepatitis or hepatic encephalopathy it cannot be there will mild preeclampsia okay okay now a 20 year old woman presented with vomiting tiredness examination she is dehydrated lft shows bilirubin 10 ast 50 alt for 45 hematocrit is 0.48 a urine analysis shows ketones what is the diagnosis would it be hyperemesis doctor hyperemesis gravidarum yes the urine analysis shows ketones so hyperemesis gravidarum is the answer 24 year old woman with 20 weeks of pregnancy pregnancy severe uh, abdominal pain dehydration she has been diagnosed with gallstones 
एल एफ टी शोज बिलोरबिन ट्वेंटी फाइव थाउजेंड ए एस टी सिक्सटी एल टी सिक्सटी एंड एलग्लाइन फॉस्फोरस फिफ्टीन हंड्रेड वॉट इज अ डायग्नोसिस Yes, so it is called stool-induced pancreatitis. Amylase is a uh, thousand. Okay, that's all. So, any one of you have got any question? Any one, any question? Any one of you, you want me to uh, like? Yeah, that's um, that one case you yes. mentioned. Is the primary biliary cirrhosis or it's a primary biliary cholangitis? One case with increased anti-mitochondria or something. uh anti mitochondrial antibodies yeah so it's so primary biliary cirrhosis that that rather than cholangitis right or i'm wrong okay okay i i, I will review I, i will check it again then i will tell you okay thanks sir. maybe i think I, I yeah it was primary biliary cirrhosis yeah okay. you are right it was yeah. primary biliary it should be primary biliary cirrhosis Also, I mean, yeah. Yeah, it okay. was should be okay. primary biliary cirrhosis. I will send the reference in the group, but it was primary biliary cirrhosis. Okay, thank you. Okay, any one of you still any question? Okay, so well, uh, all the best, people. Thanks for joining. Bye.